Hey everybody, this is the Custoda. I'm starting a new um, video series here on um, doing master detail applications in Xamarin Forms. So one of the things I'm kind of trying to figure out is um, I've got a couple of clients that have some projects for iPad specifically and trying to figure out, you know, what can I do and not do with uh, Xamarin Forms uh, versus Classic. And I think that I've found uh, a combination of Xamarin Forms and Prism is pretty flexible, pretty powerful for how quickly you can get code out the door. You know, obviously you're not going to get the full UI if you're doing this in a native or classic, you know, iOS and Android project. But on the flip side, um, it's fast. And if you can make some concessions with some of the UI, um, things you have to do, you, you, the things you can't do or, you know, without writing some crest renders or some other workarounds, I think it's still pretty acceptable. So to start out with this video, I wanted to show off um, my goal. And so obviously um, for this particular example, there's some apps that really um, stand out on the iPad that you want to emulate. And one of those is the mail application for obvious reasons. Everybody uses that thing. So here's Apple's, uh, this is an iPad um, Pro 9 inch or screen. And I'm running the Apple Mail, cl Mail Client, which is a very common program that everybody would use on an iPad. And we see here we have Master Detail set up. And how the box that works with the Mail Program is that you have to actually click the inbox and you get a dialog that pops up. And a lot of developers on a phone would use that pop-up dialog with Master Detail and Xamarin Forms for the hamburger menu. But we see here we actually physically have um, a data list of messages. And if we go back another one, we have a list of mailboxes. So this, this is clearly a navigation controller um, in the iOS frame. And then obviously in the um, we talk about a navigation page in Xamarin Forms. Over here on the other side, though, we just have a list of uh, messages. This is uh, a UI probably I'm going to guess a UI uh, table uh, view um, or a collection view. I'm probably going to guess a UI table view, um, quite honestly, because a collection view, I don't see any custom flows um, that, would, that would call it out. Um, and in uh, Xamarin Forms, we could do this with a list view. If I flip the tablet over here, we'll see that um, a little bit more interesting things happen um, when we basically get the master in detail and they're forced both open. And this is a lot of times how I like to use the mail program. As you can see, I can flick through my messages very quickly. Um, and we can see here we can get a lot of content. Now, of course, this is um, this iPad's a development iPad, so I have an account set up, my custodial account. Um, I don't have a lot of pers uh, a lot of emails in this. This is a account I don't use that often for reasons. I, a lot of my emails are probably with clients and stuff like that, and so I don't want to have that. But um, just so you know, so you can see here, there's maybe a couple emails a year that go on in here um, in this account but um, I think we have the look and feel here if you look here this is this is what we kind of want to figure out like can we do something like this in Xamarin Forms and get away with it and still have this kind of cool interaction that this iPad application has and then still work on a phone right because the mail program on a phone works very different um, we see here that when we open up um, in the pad iPad version we open up right to the message view but if we go to the phone we actually open up in the mailbox view which is a totally different um, theory of how that works. And so we want to emulate the same way. On the, on the phone, if we go to it, we're going to want the master view to show up first, and then you'll drill into the details. But on tablet, we're okay with um, either or coming up. Uh, quite honestly, what I'm hoping for is to have this locked so that both of these are open at all times. Um, and I think the client would like that better. That I'm currently working on this uh, particular POC to, to prove that we can do this very quickly in forms. So... I'm looking for this, both of it, the screen tilted one way or another. I want both these views to be available open um, with the ability to hide the view over here, obviously, and make it slide away if we wanted to. That's that's the theory I want. Um, in real, can we do that? I believe so. And we also want the same behavior in Android um, on a tablet. And so what I'm going to do is that this first video, I just want to explain what we're kind of after. Um, what I'm using to record a video, just, you know, I let some people a lot of times ask questions. I'm used to using QuickTime. Um, it turns out that there's an option at QuickTime to do a movie uh, recording. And so if you go to the QuickTime player here and bring up the menu, there's an option for new, new, new movie recording. If you have an iOS device, whether it's iPad or iPhone, even iPod Touch, quite honestly, you can select that as a video source. And the second you do that, you can record video from that device. And I do it a lot of times for, um, if you're doing either training videos or you're trying to do a sprint demo or any of those kind of things, this is a great way to record video of your apps as you're working on them throughout your sprint. So I'm going to close it out. And let's, let's talk about real quick um, 
what we're going to do here. Um, I've got, I'm going to start out one. If you just want to go look at this, I have it out in GitHub. I've got the whole entire solution already done. Um, obviously my GitHub page is slash biozal slash um, master detail forms. Um, so that's B-I-O-Z-A-L master detail forms. I'll have a link out to there in YouTube for this. So you don't have to like try to write that down. I want to do it two ways. One, here's the code. If you want to just go download it, wonderful. But if you want to like a breakdown of what I did and why I did it, I'll actually have a series of videos that I actually go through and show you how to set up this project uh, using Brian, um, who created Prism. Um, that's the framework I'm using for this. And it's a very common framework out there. And if you're doing forms, you really should be using Prism. So you can see here, I had open Visual Studio before. Now I have open Xamarin Studio. I use both. I, there are certain things I like in Visual Studio, and there are certain things I like in Xamarin Studio. Most notably, Visual Studio, the Telesense is a lot better. Um, the text editor has uh, text wrapping, and in Xamarin Studio there's text wrapping, and I find that just crazy. How does people type without text wrapping? I've got really big monitors at home, and a lot of times I'll try to get two or three code windows open at once, and I expect that text wrapping to kick in, and it just doesn't in Xamarin Studio. So over here you can see I've got text wrapping with the little glyphs turned on. So... From time to time, you'll, I'll actually write code in Visual Studio, check it in to get, um, and then actually pull it down on the Mac and actually use it for building. Because building on the Mac in Xamarin Studio is a thousand times faster than the build agent. When I say a thousand, it's about two to three times. You know, I'm being sarcastic a little bit there. But it's serious. There's, there's a noticeable difference if you're doing it in Xamarin Studio versus Visual Studio. And the same thing goes for Android applications. I've always found that Android applications build faster in, on the Mac than they do in Xamarin Studio than they do in, on the PC. So I do have this application running. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the simulator here. So here it is on the phone. As we could, we've kind of got um, some square blocks, and so I'm going to explain to you how the program works. Then I'm going to go back and record videos that actually shows you how from step one up to the, the point where the code works. So this will be a demo video, kind of almost like the summary of the video. Then the rest of the videos will slowly build it up and show you how to build this application and let you kind of make some decisions on that. The, the things I did want to demo in this and my, my proof of concept was not only does master detail work, but how do you navigate? And that's the important thing, right? Because navigation is the key to making your app awesome. It's easy to throw up master detail just for one view, but really making sure that the application properly fl uh, flows and you can get multiple views open or pages in, in several forms of views. If you're using like classic with MVM cross, they're the same thing. So if I use the word view or if I use the word um, page, I'm, I'm talking about the same thing. So let's take a look here. Um, and on this phone simulator, I have the master page view open by default. Now, what I also wanted the ability to do is, is have a hamburger menu. And I didn't want to break the way that um, my master views, my master detail views work. So what I ended up doing is making a button on the toolbar and just making a hamburger menu that takes full screen. And that, so, you know, my menu, my about page is going to be a full screen about page versus a, a slider. Because I know on tablet, I can't do a slider. I'm going to have to do a full page. So because of that, I started thinking about, well, okay, on the tablet, I could do a couple different things. I could make maybe make custom render. I mean, there's all kinds of ways I could tackle this, but what is the easiest out of the box? And could a client be happy with that, you know, minimum amount of points to get that functionality out? And of course, if you build it and then they decide maybe they want to custom render it later, well, you already have the page done. It's pretty easy then to kind of take that out and throw it into a custom render and maybe do a little bit more spiffy stuff with it. But for, for my um, sake of this program, what I definitely wanted to prove was I could put a menu button up here. I can make a different view come up if I wanted to. On top of that, once I click the navigate button, I'm going to pretend like this is a list view and I maybe selected one of the records in the list view. And when I click navigate, I'm going to get to my detail view. So here's my detail view. Now I can go back to my uh, master page view and that should go back. However, if I nav navigate back in, if this was maybe say for example, so details, and maybe we had some tabs there, or if we had some even more drill down that you could do inside of the detail view, the navigation stash should take over. In the sense, I should be able to click this and I should get to a second detail page, right? And, but when I click back, I should go to the first detail page, not to the master page. This to me means that there's a navigation page that's sitting in the root of the default and it's taking all these pages in and you actually can drill in and drill out and that should work. That's how applications should work on a tablet. And quite honestly, that's the back stack over in Android. That's my, my behavior that I've come to expect in most applications, that you're going to drill in and you're going to be able to hit the back button on the Android and drill back out. So I want navigation to work that way. So you can see here I've got a couple of examples of a couple different pages that I've got set up. 
that just to prove that this navigation theory works, they can go back and forward. And any one of these can also bring up this menu page. And you can go back to the page you're on. And that was another very important thing for me to prove um, was that, you know, you can have this very fluent um, layout. So that's what it looks like on the simulator for this project. So let's kind of just go back out here and we can get here. Let's take a look at it from an iPad standpoint. If we were to switch over the simulator to an iPad Pro. Um, so I've got the iPad Pro simulator here. Let's just go ahead and launch this. Um, I'm going to shrink down the video size so that we can see it a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to shrink the scale down maybe 33% here, try to get to a point where we can see it a little bit better. Obviously, this somewhere has a reboot and come back up. Hmm, now it's too small. Maybe we'll go back to 50%. Um, see if, uh, we'll see if, the, if this works. Great, if not, I'll shrink it back down once it boots up. So that's what's it's booting up. You know, I want this to work very similar to the mail program in the sense that now I want this to open up on a tablet with master detail kind of kicking in and all the features of it. So you can see here, I've got that same mail program. If, if you look here, I've got a navigate window here. But the difference was, I know for the client that I'm working on right now, they like to have a no content view page. And so in, on the phone app, I didn't have that. But if you haven't selected the master record, I just happen to know out of the box, my client, rather than selecting the very first record, wants this. So I wanted to say, can I route to a no content page and then have a custom graphic there or whatever you want. And then once they select something in the master detail page, then it'll show content. That's that's a pretty good idea. I also wanted the menu button, as we can see here, which fully works just like it did in master detail view. So we'll go back here. What's what's going to navigate now? I've got master detail page open and, <coughs> excuse me, click the navigate button and I'm on my first detail. I click navigate a sec uh, second time, I'm on my second page and so forth. And I can kind of go back Navigation is working. If I want, I could slide out using the finger to bring out the, the master view, and that works pretty well. If I want to um, go ahead and, and flip the screen, which is a lot of times what people like to do, we should have these locked. So the master now is locked forever, and we can kind of navigate in and out. And if I click here, uh, you can see I'm going back. I can navigate back in. Um, I can click menu. And so I don't think all these views I may have 100% menu wired up right um, to get the back button. As you can see here, I uh, might have a couple of small rendering problems with the toolbar here where it's hiding the back button. So those may be some defects I have to go take a look at and see why when I'm uh, routing through, I'm not getting a... Okay, well, this is the first view. That makes sense. Never mind. There should be no button here because this is the very first view. So it's actually, it's not a defect. Um, that button should not be there in that case. However... The menu button you can see here, I'm definitely missing the the, um, the back button here. So something's going on with the Mac, the back stack. When I go here, I'd have to click the uh, something in the master view to get that back, and that's not how it should work. So I'll have to take a look at what it kind of disappears there too. So that's that's some kind of weirdness that I've got going on with my the way that the menu pops on to the detail p uh, page view inside of tablet, and I'll have to go through and fix that and get help and, and put an update to that. We'll go through that all together when I um, create the rest of the videos of how to build this up from uh, scratch. But this is the concept I'm looking for. I think that this works great. I think it's going to be a great iPad app for my customer um, that I'm working for on this particular project. And like I said, this is all using Prism, which is uh, a MVVM framework that gives you navigation and um, a couple other really cool features. Um, obviously, it uses Unity for IO, uh, IOC, uh, dependency service, but you can kind of inject your own um, if you want a tiny IOC. Uh, there's several ones out of there. Unity isn't always known to be the fastest, but it's definitely bulletproof. Um, you're never going to have stability problems with that. So... Uh, we're going to go to do two things, that, I guess, in these videos coming up here. But one, we're going to show off how to do master detail view and uh, Xamarin Forms to show how to build an entire iPad application that works great on mobile phone and also in, in, uh, on the iPad. And also we'll show it off in Android, which I've done that already and, and have that working. We can, we can show that off in another video. Don't want to make this video too long. And we're also going to go through, and if you've never seen Prism before, I highly recommend if you're building Xamarin Form applications, you really should be using Prism. And in the past, I've not recommended Prism, uh, recommended Prism as much as I've recommended MVM Cross. Uh, but with version 4, there's been a lot of really, um, the, the last couple of releases, quite honestly, 
have been a little buggy. Um, I've got some applications that are stuck in 4.3 because there's bugs in 4.4 that I can't move forward from. Um, and prior to that, when I upgraded from 4, I had a lot of bugs that ended up having to put code fixes in until I could get to 4.2.5, I want to say, before that became stable for me. So there's um, Prison's been pretty rock solid. Um, Brian's a great guy. There's a Slack channel out there that you can get, uh, and he pretty much will answer your questions very quickly. So I'm going to wrap this video up. And if you like this video, obviously, uh, stick around for the rest of them. And if you just want to kind of go, th go through and see how I did all this magic, go out to GitHub and grab the source code and, and start playing around with it. Uh, otherwise, they'll probably take a couple weeks to get all the videos done for, like, the building everything from ground up. If you've watched, it, watched any of my videos from a couple years ago, I go into a lot of details explaining why and how. And some people like that, some people don't. That's what I'm doing, just a summary video. And if you want to go to GitHub and, and watch it, that's great. But if you want, like, the building blocks of why I did and how I did it and what I was thinking, you can watch those videos. So, once again, thank you for your time. And I uh, hope to see you around in another video.